Hey YouTube subscribers, I uh, got here a new little toy, the Vortex Pro 250, or 250 Pro, however you want to say it. Uh, this is the new Immersion RC. I guess this is more their, more or less their version two, almost ready to fly. Quad, racing quad, but as you can see in here, it's empty. And that's because I've got it out here on the bench, all torn apart. So, there's nothing wrong with it. I simply am changing out the cable. So I just wanted to show you guys a real quick summary of what to do here in case you're confused. The manual, if you haven't looked at it, you download it on the website. Uh, it just is right off of their uh, homepage, Immersion RC. And it says there, uh, it's the International uh, Revision 1 Edition. They're going to come out with a longer one, I guess it says. But this one is actually really thorough. I'm pretty impressed. It shows here. Um, so out of the box, it's set up for CPPM. I'm going to run SBUS with my uh, FR Sky Tyrannus. Uh, just be because of the lower latency. And uh, I always try and run all of my models on... Uh, <clears throat> just on uh, S bus um, for everything because it just is so much less latency and single cable 16 channels It's just so much better to use um, So anyways, it shows you here which screws to take out take those uh, Three six ten screws out and then you've got to pull off the CPP CPPM connector here and attach the S bus connector or alternatively you can use the spectrum connector to connect satellite receivers in a, with uh, with a Spectrum RX. So this right here, sorry, is my Spectrum cable that it comes with. It's got some of those uh, Pico connectors on them. And this here is uh, an S-Bus connector. So you can use this with, uh, I mean, it'll work with X-Bus, I'm pretty sure. I haven't looked, but I'm pretty sure it'll work with X-Bus. It'll obviously work with uh, Futaba's S-Bus as well. Um, and some of the other ones for other radio uh, brands that are out there as well. Um, this is a, a foam pad or a rubberized pad where your battery mounts on top of just to give it some cushioning. I've opened up the GoPro package here. You can see there's my X4 RSB uh, for my Tyrannus. I'm running modified antennas that I built myself. Um, I'm a bit of an RF guy. I like doing this kind of stuff. Uh, I'd be pr if you guys are interested in getting into this, I'd be crazy or Alex Greaves online. He gives lots of great tutorials uh, how to do and build antennas and what to change, what to look for. So I'm going to be running a couple of different things here. You can see I've already got a VAS uh, antenna here from him. Um, so I'm going to be running, if I can get it out of my box. By the way, I'm going to show you guys a little trick here that probably most of you are going to go, okay, I didn't know that existed. Simply take this out and look what's underneath. Another zipper pocket. I have to laugh how many people don't know about this, but anyways, <laughs> this thing's only been out for a few weeks, so I don't think many people have it. I know online a lot of people are whining, complaining they haven't gotten theirs from Horizon yet. Um, the, the green bind and fly shipments, but you can see there, I'm going to run left hand circular polarized. Um, so this one is an air blade, as you can tell, yeah. green one. Um, so I'm going to run an air blade on my uh, VRX and on my transmission side, I'll run another air blade. Um, yeah, that's the plan. I've got some plans to, to use some long range, range antennas later, but uh, I'm not going to go into that. Comes with a right hand circular polarized uh, IRC fat shark. Um, I believe this is a four four lobe uh, uh, antenna. So these work great. I just I've got lots of buddies that are flying these exact quads as well. We all bought them here this Christmas. So uh, I decided to go left hand just so we're not interfering with each other. <clears throat> so anyways, yeah. If you want to build some or modify some antennas, I mean, yeah, go for it. So anyways, here, what else should I show you? So there's the traditional cable. Now, the manual doesn't say to go pull the whole cover off and all that. It just says, take these screws out, lift it up, undo, pull this one out, and reconnect the other S-Bus connector or your Spectrum connector there, um, which you can do. Um, I just pulled it off. It's just an extra 10 bolts because I wanted to see fully inside here. So while I've got this apart, I'm just going to quickly go over what I've got. My son's here playing with my... 3W157 uh, competition series I'm rebuilding. Uh, anyways, so I've got the side panels here and my uh, bolts and stuff. 
So top plates off. Uh, there's some really good things I like about this quad. I know this video is all over the place. I'm just <laughs> kind of just winging it here. Um, something I really liked, all of the exits where where um, wires come out are all rubber padded. Um, I really like the GoPro mount or the Mobius mount. Works really well. I've got a GoPro I'm going to hook on here. Um, I'm going to change this uh, XT60 connector out to a Dean's connector because that's what I have. The motors, um, like if you probably haven't noticed, I'm an engine guy and I rewind motors as well. And I have to say these stock motors, like can you guys see those winds in there? They are really well done. I would have used a, a gauge or two bigger wire. Um, I rewind mine so they're right full uh, with wire in there. But let me see if I can get a better shot. You can see there's a little bit of airspace between those stator arms, but it's really well done. I'm pretty impressed. That would have taken a lot of man hours, I know from doing this, uh, to get it wound that well. Using a smaller gauge wire like they did does save time because you're not trying to thread it. But yeah, they did a good job. Um, these are the the stock motors, the Vortex uh, 2204 sized. So that means it's 22 um, millimeter diameter stator with a three, 2204, so a four millimeter um, of height on the stator. and. What do they call these? V Tech or something? Sorry, this is all over. V Spec motors. Uh, nice four mil carbon arms. I really like that. They're non folding, unlike the other 285, which should be a lot more durable. Uh, I love the little LED panel with the USB here. There's a little cover on it. You just pop off. It's awesome. There's a reset button here. Um, if you hold it for 10 seconds or five seconds, I can't remember. I haven't done it yet, but uh, you can reset the quad back to factory defaults. Um, these LEDs you can obviously change depending on what your throttle position is. So they'll go from white to red or whatever you want. Um, you can put five or six inch props. This is something nobody else I've read knows. This thing is designed for six inch props out of the box without the six inch arm, uh, arms you can buy for it. So everybody's like, what? But it's true. If you look in the manual, I'll show you even. It says... Right at the end, standard prop, gem fan 545 bullnose, six inch without a GoPro or five inch with a GoPro, optional six inch arms for a GoPro. So there you have it. If you want to run six inch, you can. It's a 20 amp ESCs on board. So you should be able to run some uh, 645s if you really want to. Just be a little cautious if you're using the bullnose, test it on the bench first or look up some thrust tests beforehand for using some good batteries because uh, you don't want to jump over, I think it's 25 amps is the max, um, you know, at least not for very long. I wouldn't, would try and stay under 28 if you can uh, in any burst situation. So yeah, anyways, let's continue here. Another thing I really like is I love that they don't have the uh, VRX um, coax directly connected um, to the to the video, uh, sorry, VTX, sorry, I said RX. So I like that it's not conne connected directly to the video transmitter um, because a lot of times when you crash, you snap off the connector on all of the other quads that are out there that have it sitting on the back and then it's got an L with the SMA connectors and often it'll shear it right out of the, right out of the transmitter and your transmitter's wrecked if you're not uh, good at soldering and even sometimes if you are it'll rip the traces all out and everything so I really like what they did here the worst thing you're gonna do even if you're using an extremely rigid camera or a antenna here is you're just gonna break your uh, SMA connector and you just bolt another one on so I really like that design um, that you can't shear it off directly from the transmitter um, I'm gonna go over this um, let's see here I'll show you if I can get the angle right here Sorry guys, this is a really poorly done video, but it's okay. It says right there, Vortex Pro 250 Powerboard version 1.0. Um, you can see right there, this was my question to uh, uh, Eugene over at um, RotorQuest, is I was like, what the heck? They didn't include a GoPro power cable to power my GoPro so I can get rid of the battery. And he was like, what? So he went and looked and sure enough, it's not included in here. Um, even though they included it on the 285, like the other Vortex, the older ones. So I don't quite understand why they skipped that unless they're really wanting to make it plug and play and didn't want people tearing into it like this. But I don't know why. Um, but anyway, so I've ordered, uh, I'm going to make my own, but I've got a Pico connector, um, 
uh, you can see, sorry, is a two pin. See in there is a two pin. Uh, and I believe this thing puts out, it's at least one amp anyways on the regulator. So five volt, one amp. Um, and I'm, I'm going to wire it up to a little USB L connector. Um, to plug into the other one. Uh, you could order one online from another vendor, um, like an aftermarket one, but they're easy to make. Um, okay, so I wanted to show you those connections on there. Um, what else do we got on the front here? We've got the flight camera, obviously, that I unplugged there. That plugs in. Little Fat Shark uh, version 2. I think it's a 700 TV line. I don't remember. I have to look. Um, We've got an external TX connection there. So you can put on your own uh, video transmitter if you really wanted to. Plugged in there. You can see all the connections for the ESCs and the motors. Um, VTX, as I said. On this side, we've got a few other connections. So over on the right there is the mic connection. So you could add a uh, mic on board like I do on some of my other FPV planes uh, and send down audio. Um, it's kind of, I don't know, I do it, but it's kind of, I don't know, I don't find it that useful, other than sometimes it's nice to hear the screaming of your motors when you can't see the thing, <laughs> to know that they still have power uh, when you're beyond line of sight, but yeah, most people aren't going to be doing that with these race quads. Um, it's got a fun connector there, which I'm not sure uh, exactly what that does, um, but the other one there says GPS upside down. So yeah, you could hook on a third party GPS if you wanted. Um, what else? We went over the rear. That's where your CPPM or your, yeah, CPPM or PPM connector goes. Your ESCs and motors. And then under the board there is just where the flight controller is connected. And then the Fusion 2 or Fusion Gen 2 board uh, you can see it's got all of these connectors, which you don't need to go over, but there's a connection what we're going to use right here. So that's what you're going to connect your S bus to or your Spectrum RX into. Uh, and then there's one for an OSD. So if you want to run a, uh, an OSD off of here to externally just look at what's going on with the board, you could do that. Uh, this thing obviously has OSD um, right on the PCB uh, that's running off of this. So Anyway, so that's being streamed to the camera and out the VTX to the goggles. So that'll be fun to play with their own uh, OSD. And uh, yeah, there's an additional connector here. Uh, it just says X1. And I'm not, and it says flight controller FC there. Uh, I'm not sure what stream this puts out. I'd have to take a look. But there's also a button here on the flight controller uh, if you need to reset it or to go through any options. I'm going to set this up just with the onboard. Uh, uh, OSD, but uh, I might uh, plug it into the computer and just play with some of the clean flight and beta flight options and OSD options. And uh, there's a firmware update already out for it, so I might try the new firmware, the beta firmware that enables uh, what's it called, air mode or whatever. All it is is an idle up. I mean, I shouldn't say that's only what it is, but this isn't like I kind of find it funny with some of this quad stuff being in this hobby for a while is uh, you know somebody comes up with this idea and they create this whole new uh, name for it, like air mode or, you know, there's, there's always this stuff coming out and it's like, really, it's just basically a really low throttle where all your motors are spinning so that you can slowly float down when you're way up high rather than just letting it drop like a rock. So you kind of have control over it and can uh, maneuver it on the way down. So anyways, I kind of find it funny sometimes because you could easily program that into your radio, but maybe there's a feature about it I haven't uh, looked at. I just, I haven't even read about it. I just know that that's what it is. So um, yeah, anyways, I just wanted to show you what you do here. Um, you just take those bolts out. This too, this is confusing and this will confuse you if you're uh, not as electrically or maybe mechanically inclined, which is fine. Um, this is a ground plane, so most of you probably know or maybe don't know, but carbon fiber is uh, conductive to electricity, and this is the real carbon fiber, the real deal. If you were to take your multimeter and, you know, put it across, an, across the arm here, uh, you'll see there's continuity. Um, so because of that, what they've done here is they've taken this little metal plate, and it goes against your VTX right there. So basically it puts pressure down there, and the other end clips in on the top. It, it wedges between the frame 
and uh, the side plate like that on each side. So it puts pressure on the VTX to hold it down uh, and it grounds it. You can see it's covered in a, in a foil metal surface there. So it just grounds the whole quad, which is kind of cool. I, I was kind of impressed, but they don't mention that in the manual. So when you go to take a side or two off, like they say to, uh, don't be surprised when this falls out. It needs to go in wedged at the top of the sides. Um, yeah, that's about it for the new uh, quad. I'm excited to fly it. I've got the new uh, head play HD goggles coming for this. And I've built some uh, antennas and done a few things. So this is gonna be a fun little setup, I think. But I just wanted to go over it for anybody that wanted to see inside. There haven't been many teardown or actually any teardown reviews that I've looked at. There's so much more I could say about this. But sorry for my ranting and I apologize for the long video and crappy quality just off the top of my head here. But uh, anyways, it's set up or it's pretty well set up out of the box. You just plug in your uh, RX, your battery, uh, make sure your antenna's on before you power it up and uh, go have some fun. Thanks a lot for watching.